Recently, scientists revealed some amazing studies that changed people's perspective on goal setting. And if you will be able to understand these principles and apply them in your daily life, you will be asking yourself why I haven't done this before. So let's start with the most obvious one. Rocks. We have three kinds of rocks here. This tiny bitch, the normal one, and the huge boulder. Fuck him. I have a question for you. Which one has the highest probability to be tossed. I guess the first thought that you had is that this one, it will be the easiest. It is definitely not this bitch. It weighs 1 million pounds. But what if I would say if tossing this bitch is not even a challenge? Thinking about tossing this small pebble will not spark anything inside of you. But take a look at this bad boy. Fits snugly in your hand. You don't know how far can you toss it but you know that you can. So let's imagine these as your goals. You don't want your goal to look like this. You also don't want your goal to look like this. But take a look at this one again. So good. Your goal has to be challenging, but not unattainable. Challenging, but attainable. Look, and it's the same with any challenge. For example, you want to do 1000 push-ups a week, right? If you will tell your brain, all right, dude, 1000 push-ups like let's take a look you, you will so you, you you will tell your brain all right 1000 push-ups here we go one two well fuck it's 998 more fuck this i don't want to do this and then you're telling your brain so and then you tell your brain all right let's go easier let's go the easiest way possible one push -up. all right one push-up good one why the fuck would I waste my time on this? It's not interesting, not challenging, come on. And then you think, 1000 push-ups means one, around 140 push-ups a day. It's like 10 push-ups an hour. <laughs> a little bit challenging. You have to keep track, so let's go. Story time. Today we will have a story, the experiment actually, about rats, two rats. Uh, rat number one and rat number two. Th this one is a free rat. It's a happy rat. And this one is kind of slave rat. Sad rat. This rat has this running wheel. It likes to run in this wheel, enjoy, enjoying the process. And th th this one, he, he doesn't like anything. I, I guess, I don't know, maybe because he's a slave obviously. This rat can run whenever uh, it wants, right? This rat has to run every time when this one runs. It, it, it doesn't have an opinion. This one likes the process, this one is forced. It, ha it hates it. So, and every time when this rat runs, that one has to run. They measured their blood lipids and the, the, the blood samples. After one week of running, I guess, this rat has everything Everything became better. It feels good. It's happy, I guess. This rat is fucking sad. It's fucking miserable. The, the, the blood lipids, I don't know. Everything went down. It became worse than in the beginning. They were doing the same thing. Running the same way. The same amount of time. But this rat liked. This one was forced to do it. From the same process, one of them decreased their health. The other one increased it. So the moral of this story, save the rats. The next one is amazing and unexpected. I didn't expect to hear something like this. This principle is about visualization. What do you know about visualization? That you have to visualize your success. You have to visualize everything good. Positivity, positivity. Turned out they did a study. Positive visualization can only help a little bit in the beginning. But if you will try to visualize the positive outcome, your success, your dream life while doing the work, you will actually decrease the probability of success. Fuck, what should I do now? So they figured out that people who visualized failure, emotional them, had much bigger chance in achieving their goals. And this is freaking unexpected.
But then I started to think, all right, yeah, that actually makes sense because by evolution, we were created to react faster on freaking negative things. Tiger running, chasing you and like poisonous stuff and everything. everything. So do you think this whole remove negativity thing is a crap? Um, kinda. Currently, I am doing 30-day run challenge. Each morning, first thing in the morning for 30 days, fucking winter, and it's freezing every day. It's minus 10 degrees Celsius outside. I decided that no excuses, no matter what, I will have to run every day. And really, what I realized is when I'm going for this run, in the morning, I'm waking up, I'm, I'm looking for all kinds of excuses. What makes me actually move is the thought about how will I feel if I will miss this run, if I will not finish this challenge, or if I will be making this video and then I will have to lie that I ran 30 days in a row because I did not. That drives me to run. And then I'm happy that I ran, of course. It's not the feeling of, oh, yes, I succeeded. No, fuck this. I don't give a shit, to be honest. What is success? All right, that's another topic. So to stop being a failure, visualize yourself failing. Boys and girls, we have a huge progress. We know that our goal should be challenging, but attainable. We know that we have to visualize failure, not success. And now the last thing, but not the least. There was a study about recycling. People were told to recycle somehow. There were uh, some scientists uh, checked all the garbage cans and everything. They checked how many trash which should be recyclable is not recyclable. And then they said to the people of that, uh, I don't know, neighborhood to recycle. And they said it in a couple of different ways and measured the success. Now, the first time they said, all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will uh, ask you to please uh, recycle more. Let's save the fucking planet. Thank you. You think something happened? These motherfuckers, they didn't give a shit about anything. Fuck, someone else will save the planet. How can I save the planet? What is saving the planet? What? So the success rate from this message was not significant. Next time they said, listen, you fuckos, we have the instruction for you. Take this plastic thing, put it in that thing. You take this, put it here. You take this paper, put it there. You have to limit the amount of your trash by 50%. The exact set of actions that each person should take. What do you think happened? 100 X improvement, 100x. What is that? What can we take away from this story is that your goals, they have to have the exact action plan. And indeed, I remember every time when I'm just saying like something like, cool, I want to get rich. Doesn't work. But when you start to write down or do anything about how rich, what amount of money do you want, then you write down the exact ways how can you attain them. You write down the timeline. Then you just you just write it down until you will get to the first step that you can take right now. And you have to remember that it's not about your emotional state. How do you want to feel the exact action plan in terms of your feelings? No, this is the step-by-step -step guide for you to follow. Do yourself a favor and if you have a goal, be exquisitely detailed about every step. It will make your life so much easier. Because for example, me, every time when I'm looking on my dreams in this very wide way, I'm just getting lost. I don't, I can't, I think it's impossible. I will not be able to do this. It, 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 it is unattainable, like that fucking boulder. When I'm like, all right, no, 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 no. You don't have to make a successful YouTube channel with 100,000 subs. No, you just have to make one video in these two days that you have. That's all. And then, good. All right, I can do this. I wanted to mention that all of the things that I just talked about, it's from Andrew Huberman's lab podcast on YouTube. He is a neuroscientist. Uh, he is a professor at Stanford University. He is amazing. I'm watching every podcast of his. And here in this video, I just wanted to put it like in my words. So if you want more detailed information about the topic, and uh, no, no, not if you want, you, you need it. You watch it. You watch his, find Andrew Huberman Lab podcast. Watch everything. This, this is a manual for your life. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.